Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here for Pop Turnative, speaking to Kamal Bolden about the end game on NBC. Thank you for your time. Welcome, so much. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, I appreciate you having me, Pete. It's exciting. I mean, you go, you work on a show, and then it kind of gets out there, and people get to see it. What's that like for you? What's that kind of separation between like going to work and then kind of playing the waiting game and it being out there? It's interesting, right? Oh, it's very interesting, and and it's very anxiety filled too. I think um, <laughs> well, once we do the work, um, you spend I don't know countless weeks, anywhere from ten to to eighteen to twenty two weeks working on this show over and over again, and you kind of do it in a vacuum. Yeah, and then you wait for it to be edited, and then when it comes out, you you I'm truly scared. I'm scared of 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 like how people are going to like receive it. And they always end up receiving it well because I choose great projects. I'm blessed to be a part of, of great stuff. So it's it's interesting seeing what my family and my friends think, as well as people like on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. Um, there's a lot happening in this show. It's a great show. I feel like, you know, it is a little bit of like a crime thriller detective is kind of like the focal point, of course. But there's a lot of elements at play. And I'm just curious when you're reading the script, do you notice how packed a show like this actually is? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what attracted me to the script. <laughs> I mean, when I got the pilot, I was like, holy, like guacamole or whatever I can say on air. Like it was it was crazy twists and turns the pilot took. But I'm a dude that I've done theater my whole life, right? Yeah. From high school up until this particular point. But, you know, drama and like naturalism and heartfelt like relationships are kind of my wheelhouse. Yep. And so being Owen, who's yes, a part of like what's going on out there with Elena Fedorova and like these banks and these heists and all that stuff that we just found out last night, but also the relationship I get to have with who's trying to take her down. So my relationship with my wife is something that really spoke to me uh, just as much as the coolness of the thriller and the heist and the guns and the chase and all that stuff. It's it's interesting, too, because I feel like when you're reading the script for it, a lot of like shows where like, you know, there's something special. You can read it and be like, OK, like this is not just kind of your typical like crime detective show. Like there's a lot more happening. Did you I'm just curious. Um. Did you go to any a school with like a good performing arts program? Like you say, you were you were involved with theater. Like, did you do theater at a young age? Yeah, that's a great question, Pete. You know, real quick on that though, when you do read a script like that, yep, it's hard to not put pressure on yourself because you want it so bad. <laughs> yes. Like when I read the script, I haven't been offered the role yet. I still yeah. got to audition, and then I got to audition again, and then they got to call me for a callback. So, like when you like, oh, I really want this. You got to like set your expectations kind of low because if you get your, you, you get all hyped up and then they like, no. Yeah, like, that's hurts. true. I didn't think about like that. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> ah, you feel it right here for about Sometimes you don't even get the scripts though. Even like, it, does it depend on the project? Like, sometimes you don't get the scripts till later on too, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like I've been a part of some projects where I got the audition and I was like, hell yeah. I, oh, this is dope. And then the script came later and I was like, oh, I would have said no if I read this whole script. But that was that was years ago, man. Like, but let's that be was... honest. There is a misconception. I, I do. I talk to a lot of storytellers like yourself, actors. I mean, there is this misconception that like you all know what's going on. You just show up and like, <laughs> like <can> we... <laughs> let's be honest. Like, <laughs> Let's be honest. Listen, I need you to talk to my mom, my family, my friend. Like they they talk to me as if I have all of this information. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, I, I have zero empowerment in over anything but my own acting and my own performance. Yeah, working with the director. But in terms of all of that other stuff, I don't know <laughs> anything about that. I'm watching the episode just like you watching the episode right now. Yeah, know? it's oh, like the best thing too is like the fan theories where I've talked to people on shows and they're reading the theories and they're talking to these fans and the fan, the, the the fans maybe think that they know and they have no idea. So like the actors no like idea. that'd be cool. Yeah, like I'm no. with you here. <laughs> And sometimes it's for the best. Like, for instance, even with the end game right now, like there's so many things I don't know about the upcoming episodes. Mm -hmm. And that's probably for good reason, because 
if I did, then that might affect like some of the choices I'm making. And 100%. as an actor, sometimes you just want to know what your character knows. Yep. You're like, my character only knows this right now, and that's what he's going for. That's his objective. That's the world he lives in. We don't know. My character doesn't know what's supposed to happen 10 days or 10 episodes down the line. Because if he did, then it'd be a whole other thing. And now you're giving away too much in the performance. Yeah. It's a game. We'll let the the, the people, the players play the game, right? <laughs> right. Players going to play, baby. Players going to play. But I did want to ask, though, about the the, the theater background, because that interests me as well. Yeah. Um, was that a young age, or was it, like, in your early teens? Like, when did you, like, start? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't start that until, like, my junior year of high school. Oh, like, wow. I thought, I'm from Peoria, Illinois. And okay. when I was growing up, Peoria, Illinois was known for basketball players. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, like, high level top recruits you know now we got nba champions like sean livingston that have come from peoria illinois yeah and um i thought i was gonna hoop i i really seriously did i was i was in the academics i did my work but i thought i would hoop and then yeah. like everybody kept growing and it wasn't until like my sophomore year that i realized i wasn't everybody because mm -hmm. i didn't keep growing i didn't keep getting taller like him so i got cut from the basketball team and that's when I went to like theater, like to find like something else to do. And then you pitch play. like, I have a really good idea for a play about a player that like got his like cut from a basketball team. Do we want to like do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've been in my emails. You already know what's coming up next. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I'm starring in it too. Thirty year old basketball player in high school, but no, um, I got into it then, and it was just mostly clowning around. I, yeah, I, I wasn't really. I did. I think we did like Little Abner as a musical. We did. Yeah. Greece. I play oh, yeah. like Sonny Lattieri, you know, freaking A, that type of stuff. Just throwing <laughs> stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. But, but, I mean, so I went to a school that had a lot of, like, performing arts, and I was on a stage crew and everything. Mm -hmm. Is there not, the a, like, the day of a performance, right? Like, you're, you're, like, you wake up in the morning, you know, whether you're on stage crew or whether you're going to be performing, you're pretty ever, a, like, a performance, right? So it's, like, seven, eight hours before there's this like rush before like a day of a performance, right? It's like one of the best things ever, right? Have you ever had the rush of the night before going to sleep, knowing you got a performance at like 9 a.m.? Yep. And then waking up at 9.30 <laughs> for like 30 missed calls? I had that happen. I, I literally missed a performance once when I was doing children's theater in Nashville. Oh my goodness. And I literally, like, it was the craziest thing I've ever had happen in my career. I thought my career was over. I, I, I was playing like Grandpa Salt in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I look up in my phone and I got 30 missed calls. They're like, where are you at? I fly down the highway of Nashville, Tennessee. I go on stage 45 minutes into the show. Like I, I like grab hand puppets and just walk onto the show. I'm the only black dude in the show. So, like, I know the audience of kids was like, where did this black dude come from? Like, he's 45 minutes into the show. It's like this random brother on stage with puppets. But um, that's the type of rush that I've been chasing the rest of my career. Like, that's why I do theater is that rush of performing. But I'm talking, about the, I'm, I'm talking also about the rush where, like, you're, you're not late, right? Like, you're ready to go. <laughs> that type of rush? That, that I've always had that. Now I'm chasing, like extra highs that come from like, you know, uh, uh, just knowing that what you're doing is it's only going to exist in that moment in time. Yeah. And that is a rush in and of itself. Like you've done three and a four and a half weeks of, of rehearsal. Now yeah. it's time to go on, you know, the, but the difference, like you look at the end game on NBC and you look at like plays and performances, the live component and the, like, you know, you could go do like a take on, on, on the end game. You have some time to like, Hey, can I do another take? You can take it easy. Like a performance. It's like, uh, can I do that? Like, you're, are you going to ask the audience? Hey, can I do can I do that line again? Is that okay with you? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they wish we would do the line again. I mean, it's crazy. But I've I've had I I, I will never stop doing theater. I, yeah. I will never stop doing theater as long as I live. As long as I can get on that stage, I'll do it because I love it just for that aspect. You get a chance to work with an amazing amount of amazing talented storytellers on the end game can you just talk a little bit about that and who you get to work with and just kind of like i mean it's 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 amazing it's a great cast like performances are amazing man seriously hey i appreciate that thank you you know what's crazy about it is you get the script and you go wow this is amazing and you don't even think about anybody in mind and yeah. then this cast comes to you and you're like i didn't think this could get any better yep. but it actually got better 
when you bring in like someone like Marina Baccarin, who has the the type of pedigree she's had since the beginning of her career, yep. um, just the little things that her and her and Ryan Michelle Beth they do is like, oh, you're playing with words, you're playing with language, you're playing with so many different things that that I'm learning from every day. Yep. Just watching them go head to head in this like you know battle of the minds. You know what I'm saying? And they they know how to tell a story with just a, sing, a single look, you know, a single word. It's just yeah. it's amazing to watch them do their work. We've established that Kamal Bolden is a storyteller. We talked about you know the plays. We talked about the end game. You're a storyteller. That's what you do. What excites you about storytelling specifically that you can tell me right now? The journey. The journey. You ever had somebody tell you a story without a journey? No. And you yeah. want to get physical? Exactly. Like yeah. if you if they did, you, you want to slap them. You want to you want to like remove them from your presence. The journey of a story always excites me. And, and I mean, I read all type of stories. I'm in book clubs. The beginning, <laughs> middle, and end of a story excites me because it's all about change. How does yeah. a person change mm -hmm. from the beginning of you telling me that story to the end of it? How was that change, and how did they get there? And yep. that's what excites me about watching stories as well as telling them. Oh yeah. Because that's what life is. Life is all about experiences and how they shape you to get to your, you know, your destination. Oh, hundred percent. Is there different? I know a lot of people have like the thing they do and they, you know, tackle a script a certain way. Cause I've had this question answered different times. And I'm curious what your perspective is. Does it depend on the role and the project in terms of how you like prepare, how you'll take a look at the story, or do you have kind of a thing that you like doing before every and any role? Like, I'm just curious. Uh, that's a great question. You know, sometimes the process changes. Uh, mm -hmm. Every actor has its own process and, and listen, you know, people want to know, but they really don't want to know. Like in, in a way, in terms of like, <laughs> It, it gets kind of tedious and boring, but I will say that my process is kind of ever shifting. So yeah. the question is is so valid because like if I'm on 61st Street on AMC and I'm playing this cop that's torn between his allegiance, between the community he serves and like his badge, like I might do some different things, you know, because I'm yeah. on location there. I might, I might do some things. I might go out and touch some things and kind of get real textile with things because I'm on the south side of Chicago yeah. as opposed to being on the end game where I might be shooting on a set. Now I might listen to some music or particular things, but that's on the day of. My yeah. preparation never changes. No, I, absolutely. I, I tackle it the same way. I've had I've had that question be such a letdown, where like like they would just get to that, like they didn't even tell me that like the pen. They just like no, it never changes. It never changes. Like it's the same every time. <laughs> I just like and I'm like okay. <laughs> No, no, man, no, it changes. It definitely changes because you got, you know, you work with different people too. And so like, you know, yeah. like I said, what I do at home, that's like private. But yep. when I get on set, like the way somebody else works might change the way I work. Yep. On set, you know what I mean? Like if I got a guy who's opposite me or a woman who's opposite me and they're like very energetic and very talkative, I'm not going to just like stone face them or anything and just go over to my corner and learn my lines. Part of the bond that I get with them is to kind of speak their language. And that, yep. that will allow me to kind of inform my character and how my character deals with them. Does that yep. make sense? Oh, it does. So absolutely. Yeah, I, I switch it up. I switch yeah. it up. No, absolutely. I wanted to thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn of a Chat. And this was a great conversation. Thank you so much, man. Man, you're one of the best, man. I appreciate it. Oh, I really, that means a lot. Thank you so much. So Endgame, NBC, they can check that out. And plug away, where can people follow you on social media to keep up date with everything? Yo, first of all, hit up the end game, like you said, Monday nights, 10, 9 central. You can check me out on uh, Facebook, Kamal Angela Bolden. You can hit me on Twitter, Young Rico Pryor, and on Instagram at Kamal Bolden. And then uh, check out NBC, I mean, uh, AMC 61st Street in April. Yeah, Coming absolutely. Up. There's a lot happening. It's it's exciting now. Like, there's not much more to say. It's yeah. an exciting time, right? Really exciting. It's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been Pop Turner, youtube.com slash Pop Turner for previous episodes. Until next time, this is Kamal Bolden and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.